Number 14, this is one of my all-time favorites. One of the guys who got me sponsored. One of the guys who, you know, kind of has set the precedent of, of classy skateboarding. And that's Guy Mariano's life on video. I was able to sit with Guy for two days straight, about six hours each day, and talk to him about his life on video. And there's very few people that can say, well, I guess nowadays, you know, since everything's on video. There's very few people that can say, you can do an entire five-part series retrospective on your career from the time you were 13 years old till now and still probably have another 10 to 15 years of doing some of the most groundbreaking tricks in skateboarding. And that's Guy Mariano, number 14, life on video. When people ask me, like, what does, like, filming mean to me or what does a video, like, mean to me, it's almost at this point in my life, it's realistically a, a, a sense to get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> it's, it's everything to me. It's mainly the only thing I really do in skateboarding. I'm not a contest skater and I'm not out there in all these other ways that a lot of these younger kids are nowadays. Like the main thing I really do now is make videos and that's why they're fucking important to me and that's why like I hold them so close and that's why I get crazy trying to film them because like I love them so much. So I'm from Burbank, California. Burbank, California is mostly known for the studios, Warner Brothers and film a lot of TV shows over there. It was an amazing place to grow up, but not the best skate town. When I was growing up in Burbank, some kid had got hit by a car. He was like going down a hill, not like a skater, but just a kid on a skateboard was going down a hill on his butt and like went out into a main street and got hit by a car and killed. They kind of were really tough on skateboarding. They started giving a lot of tickets like for it, you know what I mean? And my mom was like, ended up going to court and going to court and like skateboarding became kind of a crime in Burbank. It was hard for me and my friends to actually do a lot of skateboarding there. But I mean, we did what we could. I got introduced to skating um, through just neighborhood friends and they were Junior, Mike, Brian, and Charlie King. They were probably about three to four years older, which was like a lot at that age, you know? Those were my, my influences from Burbank that really like introduced me to skating and were like, here's the music we're gonna listen to and like here's the videos, like Santa Cruz. And I seen like that not as cop as part of him like skating and doing rails and like skating curbs and just like these tricks he was doing at the beach and that's what lit my fire. That's what I realized is what I wanted to be, what type of skater I wanted to be, a street skater. And then so I have like that phase of my life and then what happens like through there is like I think I started getting a little bit more serious about skateboarding. I start doing like little contests, castle contests, NSA contests. I start getting first place in a lot of contests, just my age division, and I notice this other kid starts getting first place in every contest. Every time I'm up there, he's standing right next to me in like the next age division up, and that guy was Gabriel Rodriguez. Gabriel Rodriguez, I would have to say, would be like the first biggest break for me in skateboarding. And I remember this contest, I skated with him and he did like a kickflip board slide on a rail slide bar. And this was just like way before his time. And I was like, you know what? Like I need to go up to that dude, introduce myself, get his phone number and start hanging out with him. That's a good lesson in life for anybody, I think, is just if you see something you like to like approach it. Breaking that little fear, that uncomfortableness for that one second mm -hmm. changed my life forever. Are you sure it's recording? Yeah. So I live in the Valley, Burbank, in Gabriel's Mid-City, Los Angeles, which is a very historical area with these beautiful houses, but which has now become the ghetto. 
So my mom starts dropping me off at his house every weekend and I mean she's pulling up with like a line of like, you know, gangsters like pulled over helicopters and she's just like, are you sure this is like cool? And I'm just go, we got it. Right when I start hanging out with him, he has already like had a sponsor me tape. And this sponsor me tape is at Renee's Skate Shop. It was a record store and a skate shop in one. For some reason, Stacy Peralta, I think, is like shopping for records or even like checking out the skate shop and is given the tape. And I remember like thinking in my head, if Stacy watches this tape, he's gonna get on Powell. And if he doesn't watch the tape, he's gonna like get on Santa Cruz. It's a done deal, you know what I mean? Like no one knows how good this guy is. It was funny because I stopped caring about what all these other pros and all these other people like were actually doing and I was really just focused on him because that's how far ahead of his time he was. Sure enough, Stacy calls and he's going to go on like, you know, basically a trial run and Stacy's going to come check him out and like watch him skate Wilshire Boulevard and like Los Feliz School and Gabe wanted me to come with him. This is the thing, like Stacy to me was like a real like live scout. He had his ear to the street at that time. That impressed me the most. You know what I mean? I'm just like, wait, this is like Stacy Peralta, the dude that's out filming like Lance Mountain, Tony Hawk and all these guys. Like, how did he go into Renee's shop? Why did he get that video and look at that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I couldn't believe it at the time. So Gabe dragged me in. I just remember being super nervous. Like, I think we both were like, we could barely skate, but Gabe did his thing and Stacy was super impressed. He saw something in us. And then we're like, hey, I know you like us too, but like the reason where we got all this stuff from is like Paulo Diaz, like he's the king. You gotta let him in. It was so weird because he did. And like at that point, we're like, dude, you can't just leave Rudy out. We all have to be in here. You know what I mean? I think Stacy was probably like, dude, these guys, like, you know what I mean? Like, dude. This was to us the biggest and best thing that ever happened. Like we are like, we are gonna make it. We are gonna be the next Bones Brigade. So we get to the spots and I remember like, you know, only having a couple of tries at certain things and kind of feeling like a little rush because it'd be like a half hour at the most of filming. And it's like, if someone doesn't get their trick, we're still moving on. If you didn't make it in a couple of tries, it's like, we weren't gonna sit there and wait for it all day long because like Stacy was shooting on film. The first Saturday, we do a bunch of skating shots. And so the next day, we think we're gonna do a bunch of skating shots, right? And he starts doing some pickup shots. He's doing like, you know, we're skating down like clapping, we're doing some like flat ground, we're doing some stuff. And we start realizing it's like, hey, we're not gonna like make it to the spots today, really. Like we're kind of just doing pickup shots. And I think at that time, we got a little nervous and, and Stacy reminded us, he said, hey, like, you know, we're gonna have time to film you guys again. So you gotta imagine like six to eight months go by. Stacy's like, the video's gonna be coming out and we're not gonna do pickup shots. And we're like, dude, we have to show him an edit of the stuff we're doing now. And so we get back to his office and we show him the tape and he's just like blown away. He's just like, I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, what, what you guys have like done in this small amount of time, but I'm gonna tell you like, you know, it's not your time right now, but you will have your time. And, and your time will be big, you know what I mean? And to hear him say that and like, you know, it, he was absolutely right. And it did happen like that. We loved Stacy so much and he was always super honest. And so it didn't bother us, we just accepted that. That moment of being able to hook up with Stacy, being able to film, being able to be in that video, it didn't showcase what we were capable of, but it like introduced us to the scene and left an amazing mark and like so grateful for that. And I think that that would lead me down the line to work with Spike, to work with Ty, and to work with all these other people, you know what I mean? But I think that like, that was my first extremely big break.